Valchagu Yuo Scott's The Celtic Podcast. Kimraha Huladunya, how's everyone? On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gaelic, that's Let's Try a Little Gaelic. We're doing a new series, Traveling Gaelic, and we're going to do some common signs you will see. In Celtic history, the 11 moments that made Irish history, and in everyday Celtic ways, 25 awesome things that Scotland has given the world. We'll hear music from Katrina Watt, Top Floor Travers, and Runrig. And as always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to test your knowledge to start us off. When you see the word quay in an address, you know it will be located where? All right. Check out Yale Scott Facebook group where you can be a part of the Celtic culture. Keep an eye out for the Celtic Badass, Celtic Music Spotlight, Learn a Gaelic Song, and Dark Celtic History videos. And if you're a member of the Facebook group, <clears throat> keep an eye out for the new Celtic Music Radio sessions. All right, just something to give you something to listen to when you're in the car. Karsh Maha, let's kick this thing off. Jealous Woman by Katrina Watt. And now it's time for Fekimich Beck and Gaelic. That's Let's Try a Little Gaelic. Now I'm not an authority on the Gaelic language. I just love learning it. I struggle like most and I want to help. What I teach comes right from well-respected Gaelic teachers, so I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. I always display what I'm discussing on the screen so you can follow along. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to be doing that Traveling Gaelic segment. And we're going to concentrate, you know, on words and phrases that come in handy while traveling to Gaelic speaking parts of the world. You know, if you go through the beginner's course that we have on the Facebook group or somebody else's beginner's Gaelic course, um, <clears throat> even if you have just a beginning understanding of Gaelic, that will help out a lot for us to go and diving into this. All right. Now, today's not going to be so difficult, though. Common signs you'll see if travel in areas they speak Gaelic. All right. Welcome, Falcha. 
open, Fasklitsche, close, Tunsche, entrance, entren, exit, doors to mock, way out, slia amok, push, stob, pull, gib, toilet, tie vec, men, fear, or dunya, women, ooh, nahen, or bornak, and forbidden, tormixja. All right. That's it for Fekimich back in Gaelic. History today, we're going to do the 11 moments that changed Ireland's history. 
Certain moments have had a seismic impact on Irish history, and here are what I see as the most important moments that shaped the Ireland of today. Number one, the coming of the gospel to Ireland. Now, through the spread of Christianity, um, as General linked with St. Patrick, it, it had actually been established in Ireland before his arrival in 432. The Irish were in the habit of plundering the long western seaboard of Roman Britain in search of booty. Irish author Neil Hegart explained in his book Story of Ireland, the first Christians in Ireland, therefore, were most likely Britons carried across the sea as slaves. In 431 AD, not St. Patrick, but Bishop Palladius, an aristocratic Briton who is often left out of the Irish story, arrived from Rome to minister to the Irish believing in Christ. Christianity became fundamental to Ireland's culture and identity, and has played a part in some of the Ireland's greatest struggles, but also it, its glories, like the Book of Kells, for one. Number two, the arrival of King Henry II in Ireland. Now, in 1167, a group of Anglo-Norman adventurers sailed from Pembrokeshire in Wales to County Wexford. Now, within a couple of years, the ports of Waterford, Dublin, and Wexford fell. Though the Irish tried their hardest to put up a good fight, soon after, in 1171, King Henry II arrived in Ireland to add to his extensive empire, making the establishment of the first English colony. The papal possession remained in Ireland for 400 years to come, surviving the Black Death, an indigenous Irish resurgence, and a Scottish invasion. It wasn't until Henry VIII became king in 1541 that England and Ireland became formally united under one crown. All right. Number three, the plantation of Ulster. In 1606, Scottish farmers, craftsmen, artisans, and other settlers arrived at the port of Dunedee in County Down and to create the plantation of Ulster a British Protestant settlement in Northern Ireland, which until this point was the most Catholic part of the country. Some 30,000 colonists then arrived in Ulster, expelling Ga uh, Gallic landowners from their homes. The plantation marked the beginning of a very violent century to come. Oh, wow. Number four, the sack of Drogheda. In August of 1649, uh, English military and political leader Oliver Cromwell marched 30 miles to Drogheda, an Irish port held by royalists, where his troops indiscriminately massacred 3,500 people. This was much of the town's population, Irish, English, Catholic, and Protestant alike. Winston Churchill said the siege cut new gulfs between the nations and the creeds. Upon all of us there still lies the curse of Cromwell. Yeah. Number five, the Battle of Ulgrim fought in 1691 in the boggy fields of Galway was the final defeat of Catholic Ireland at the beginning of Protestant ascendance. It was the decisive battle of the Williamette War between the Jacobites, who are supporters of King James, and the Williamites, supporters of Prince William of Orange. One of Ireland's bloodier battles, and over 7,000 people were killed. All right, number six. An argument on behalf of the Catholics in Ireland. Wolf Tone, one of Ireland's most charismatic national leaders in history, wrote a pamphlet in 1791 titled An Argument on Behalf of the Catholics in Ireland. He dreamt of a non-sectarian Irish Republic, and his compelling pamphlet called for the emancipation of Ireland's Catholics. After it was published, a group of Presbyterian merchants and manufacturers who supported Tone's passion and vision formed the Society of United Irishmen in Belfast. Inspired by the American and French revolutions, they launched the Irish Rebellion of 1798 with the objective of ending British rule over Ireland, which began in May and lasted through September. Now, Tone was captured, tried in court, um in Dublin, and sentenced to be hanged. He took his own life shortly before his execution was to take place, though. Number seven, Daniel O'Connell and the Catholic Emancipation. Uh, Daniel O'Connell envisioned an Ireland where Catholicism and national identity went hand in hand, and he understood the importance of 
enlisting the masses to achieve goals specifically, repealing the Act of Union, he uh, showed the world the possibilities of mass politics and media, and the threat of popular unrest as means of achieving political goals. He had the whole world, not just Ireland and the UK, asking the Irish question of independence. Now, due to O'Connell's mass Catholic Association movement, the British government in 1829 were frightened for the first time by the possibility of anarchy in Ireland. Ooh, and Gorda Moore, number eight, The Great Hunger. Probably the most devastating five years in Ireland's history. The Great Hunger began with a potato, a potato blight in 1845 that lasted through 1849, killing over a million with disease and starvation. The population fell into serious decline due to deaths and emigration, and the trauma was felt for years and years after the famine ended. The inaction of the British government exacerbated the famine's effects, and nationalists coined the phrase, the Almighty, send a potato blight, but the English created the famine. Wow. Nine, 15 leaders of the Easter Rising are executed. Wow. Over the course of nine days in May of 1916, the Easter Rising, 15 leaders of the Easter Rising were executed, uh, were taken from their cells in Dublin's Kilmany Goal to the Stonebreaker's Yard to be executed by firing squad. Of the 15 were the seven signatories of the Irish Proclamation, uh, Emin Kent, Thomas James Clark, James Connolly, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Patrick Pierce, and Joseph Mary Plunkett. The other men executed were Roger Casement, Con Colbert, Edward Daly, Sean Houston, Thomas Kent, John McBride, Michael Mallon, Michael O'Hanoran, and Patrick Pierce's younger brother, William Pierce. Initially, after the Easter Rising, the public wasn't supportive of the rebels because they left Dublin in pieces and many civilians were killed. Now, after British authorities decided to execute the men, they became political heroes. Public opinion shifted radically overnight. Now, this set the scene for the next five years, which brought the end of British rule to Ireland and in 1922 established the Irish Free State. All right. Number 10, Bloody Sunday. Now, even though there had been other Bloody Sundays, this one is the one that really set the tone. And on January 30th, 1972, Civil Rights March for Catholic Equal Rights in Derry, which is Londonderry, Northern Ireland, took a turn for the horrid when British soldiers opened fire on the crowd of protesters and bystanders. Thirteen men were killed on the spot, seven of whom were teenagers, and a fourteenth died months later due to injuries. While Bloody Sunday doesn't have the highest amount of casualties in Ireland's history of wars and massacres, it was perhaps the most significant event of the Troubles because the fatalities came from the forces of the state itself and in full view of the press and public. Initially, the public accepted the army's claim that the IRA operatives in the crowd fired first. It wasn't until 38 years later that the, a new British government inquiry exonerated the victims, deeming the army's actions unjustified ooh, and unjustifiable. And 11, the Good Friday Agreement. Though a solution to the troubles in Northern Ireland for years seemed impossible, the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in April 1998, perhaps the biggest political development in the peace process. Central to the agreement were issues related to civil and cultural rights, decommissioning of weapons, justice, and policing, which set a strong framework for uh, Northern Ireland's political progress. It also formed a number of institutions between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, as well as the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom. All right. Well, that's it.
sing he's a stay the fuel keys your attention it's ne sang o petty it's ne tail o wo a ne word of honor or love will i mention but i'll sing o a lassie i can't long ago ne better than ne stand ne worse as money and what do me to her no easy to say she was cursed she was headless and she was ne that bonny but she was the star o the bar in her day i strivake the royal mile we heard winking in style we heard roll street free in the end of in survey Swore in the pubs we heard, rolled in the dubs we heard, catch many subs we heard, never repaid. Nay better than maist, and nay worse as money. And what do me to her's no easy to say. She was cursed, she was headless, and she was the that bonny, but she was the star o the bar in her day. Chaps, we young lassies will leave me of soon passes, and all your bright dreams are but straws in the wind. Better one who'll set tune with you, sing a fine tune with you, pass the glass ring with you, drink ourselves blind. Nay, better than me, stand nay worse as money. Was cursed, she was headless, and she was near that bonny. But she was the star o' the bar in our day. All right, that was The Star of the Bar by Top Floor Travers. Now it's time for Everyday Celtic Ways. 25 awesome things Scotland has given the world. Now with a population of over 5 million, the Scots are a rare bunch graced with endless innovation and epiphanies. The source of numerous genius inventions, the fun doesn't end with earn brew, whiskey, burn suppers, and deep fried Mars bars. Discover just 25 incredible things from Scotland that have made the world a better place. First one, the TV. Now just think, the world would have not been introduced that wee gem of a magic box had not been for a Scottish engineer, John Logie Baird. This legend, known as the father of television, gave the first ever demonstration of one back in 1925. Kaleidoscopes. A legit banter machine and an endless source of amusements. It's no surprise that a Scot created a kaleidoscope. The brainchild of Scottish inventor Sir David Brewster. This hypnotic device was born in 1816. Refrigerators. Considering the, at times, Baltic weather conditions in Scotland, you wouldn't think people back in the day would be scrambling to invent a fridge, but they did. The first ever artificial refrigeration was designed by, ooh, in 1755 by Scottish professor William Cullen. All right, penicillin. Genuine medical emergencies are made all the more bearable thanks to Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming, who discovered the antibody antibiotic penicillin in 1928. It's a lifesaver. Encyclopedia Britannica. Man, the internet before the internet. The Encyclopedia Britannica is the original Google. Yes, life did exist before the internet. The oldest encyclopedia in English language is still going strong today. The first issue was published in Edinburgh as three volumes between 1768 and 1771. Bicycles. Queen fans may not have heard Freddie belt out, I want to ride my bicycle. 
had it not been for the Scottish man of many hats, Kirkpatrick Macmillan, a blacksmith from Dumfrieshire, he conjured up the pedal bicycle around 1839 in a bid to get around a f as a, in a faster pace. His original uh, horizontally mental meant that he never patented or kicked up a fuss when others caught onto the trend. That's cool. Toasters. Whether brown, white, gluten-free, or Pop-Tart, the next time you're waiting for the electric bread toaster to work its magic and pop out your ego, just remember, this genius appliance was invented in 1893 by Alan McMasters, a Scottish scientist with a penchant for breakfast. Modern Geology Although curious minds were studying the Earth's physical material for centuries, there's no denying that good old James Hutton, the father of modern geology, made investigating rocks and earth science sexy by bringing it out of the dark ages. Celebrated as the first modern geologist, Hutton's theory of uniformitism and other works put geology on the map as a legitimate science. All right. The Bank of England. Unbeknown to many, Scottish banking mogul and trader Sir William Patterson was one of the first to put forth the idea of the Bank of England. Hmm. Golf. Scotland, with its slew of iconic courses, is praised time and time again for inventing golf, with the first record of modern sport dating back to the 15th century. Tires. The year 1888 witnessed a nifty contraption, the very first pneumatic bike tire. This was all thanks to Scottish inventor and veterinary surgeon John Boyd Dunlop. Gin and tonic. Oh, wow. Ah, the G&T, that wonderfully refreshing and quintessentially British tipple that we all love and adore. It's all thanks to Scottish doctor George Cleghorn. During the 1700s, he found that quinine was a wonderful elixir for treating malaria. With the view that gin o'clock is around the clock, British officers in India during the early 19th century added lime, sugar, and water, and a splash of gin to the quinine, so the counteract the bitter taste, and voila, the G&T. All right, Dolly the Sheep, a Scottish hero. Dolly is kind of a big deal. Born in 1996 at the Roslyn Institute at the University of Edinburgh, Dolly was the first ever mammal cloned via the process of nuclear transfer from an adult somatic cell. This legendary sheep, whose existence was a groundbreaking scientific breakthrough, had three mothers. Wow. Chicken Tikka Masala. The rumors are true. Tikan, chicken Tikka Masala, a popular gastronomic delight, is said to have originated in Glasgow. Uh, Mr. Ali Ama Aslam, owner of Glaswegian culinary landmark, the Shish Mahal, invented the dish after a customer complained about dry chicken. All it took was a sumptuous blend of spices swirled with an innovative helping of Campbell's condensed tomato soup. And he had in stock, and, uh, he, you know, the rest is history. All right. Telephones. Now, if it weren't for Scottish inventor Alexander Graham Bell and his brilliant mind during the 1870s, who knows what the future of social media and emojis would have looked like. Sure, he didn't create smartphones, but he was smart and he did invent a phone. The first practical telephone. Color photography. An essential contribution to the art of photography, Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell brought to light the three-color method using pure colors of green, red, and blue in 1855. Now, Maxwell's research is responsible for the first color photograph, a tartan ribbon with his theory acting as the foundation for most color processes today. Criminal fingerprinting. While on an archaeological dig with a friend, Scottish doctor and missionary Henry Fultz noted that fingerprints were apparent on ancient clay fragments, an observation that became a live submission. Fultz began to dig deeper, publishing his findings in 1880. Let's just say that if it weren't for his for the Scott, criminals may not have to wear gloves. Hmm. Now, Grand Theft Auto. A classic, you know, cult-like video games. Grand Theft Auto is the brainchild of Scottish video game designer extraordinaire David Jones. Um, 
and Mike Daly. Remember the Kincaid Bridge and the Grand Theft Auto, San Andre? Yep, you guess it. That's rail bridge is based on Scotland's iconic fourth bridge in Edinburgh. All right. The BBC. As the founder of the BBC, John Ray, the first Baron Reich from Stonehaven in Aberdeenshire, became the first general director when this broadcasting institution went public in 1927. Reith is also the man responsible for trending independent public service broadcasting in the UK. Tractor Beams A team of dedicated scientists at the University of Dundee extended the frontiers between sci-fi and the earthly realm by making tractor beams a reality. Coined by the influential Edward E. Smith in his 1947 sci-fi novel Space Hounds of IPC, the term tractor beam is an updated version of his a tractor beam and is essentially a contraption that lures something to another from great distances. All right. Logarithms. A human calculator. John Napier must have been the type of person who's to solve mathematical problems in his sleep. This Scottish genius is renowned for his discovery of a logarithm. And don't get me to explain it. Um, decimal points. A man of many mathematical related talents, John Napier of Murchison, also made common use of the decimal point in math, and he made it look cool. They paid me to say that. Aston Martin Vanquish. Sexy, smooth, and super powered. The Aston Martin Vanquish is just one of many stunning cars by Scottish car designer and Jaguar's director of design, Ian Cullum. This V12 Grand Tour car served as the wheels of James Bond in Die Another Day. All right. Hypodermic syringe. Said to be modeled after a bee's sting, Scottish Dr. Alexander Wood invented the world's first hypodermic syringe in 1853. And probably the greatest invention of all, flushing toilets. No explanation needed here, really, although Sir John Harrington is credited with inventing this necessary contraption. The wise Scottish watchmaker and instrument inventor Alexander Cumming was actually the first to patent the design of the flushing toilet in 1775. Cumming conjured up the indispensable bend or S-trap that's used today for in blow plumbing fixtures. All right, that's kind of cool. Well, that's it. The 25 awesome things Scotland brought to the world. The night that I was married, my sorrows did begin. I being a widow's doctor, and he a captain's son. For now he's gone and left me, and near return will he. Since the rock so Gibraltar, he twined my love and me.
old soldier Gibraltar, he twined my love and me. All right, that was The Rocks of Gibraltar by Top Floor Travers. Well, that's it for today. I hope you liked it. Top of Leva Harrison. Now, before I let you go, the trivia question and answer. When you see the word quay in an address, you know it will be located near a body of water because quay means wharf or a wharf. Remember to check out my YouTube channel, Ye Old Scott. It's got the Celtic Badass, Celtic Music Spotlight, Celtic Podcast, Speaking Our Language, Learn a Gallic Song, Dark Celtic History Videos, and lots more. And my Facebook group, Ye Old Scott, where you can give me your insights and inputs on all things Celtic. Martian leave in Drazda. Bye for now. But I'm going to let you go with the song Erechon on the Sea by Runrig. Curse of John, I should show.